We're about to board the flight to go to Cairo. Three years ago, I became the first human to ever get a legal permission to climb the Great Pyramid of Giza. This folder contains signed documents from the Egyptian ministers of tourism, antiquities, Egyptian military, homeland security, and intelligence. All giving me and my friend Oscar a written consent to go ahead and climb the pyramid. You're probably thinking to yourself, if this guy actually made history and became the first human to climb the pyramid with legal permission, then you'd have probably known about it. Well, you're right. I haven't climbed the pyramid quite yet. The story took so many turns and I came closer to doing it than any other human has before. Ladies and gentlemen, we just came out of the Supreme Council of Antiquities and we got the paper officially climbing the pyramids. We got our signatures it's on it. It's been a dream, man. But we're climbing tomorrow, baby, around two. Stay tuned. Climbing the Great Pyramid of Giza was the first dream I have ever had. I visited the pyramid for the first time when I was four and I still distinctively remember asking my dad if I could ever climb to the top. He said, absolutely not. And for some reason that just stuck with me over the years, until I decided to do something about it. So in November of 2014, I was a sophomore at university in Canada and just one random night, I showed up to my friend Oscar's dorm room and I asked him if he wanted to come to Egypt with me over Christmas break and try and convince the government to let us climb the pyramid. And the plan was to pitch the climb as a media stunt in order to promote Egyptian tourism, which at the time was much needed. It still is, but we just thought we'd give it a try. Oscar was in and we convinced GoPro to give us a few cameras in order to capture the journey. So jump forward to a month later, Oscar and I arrive in Egypt and the million dollar question is, where the heck do I even start? The concept of being legally permitted to climb the pyramid was just so outrageous and out of the norm that every government official that I would talk to would just get so mad at me for having such a request. I was constantly made fun of and occasionally kicked out of offices. It took 37 days of driving three hours nearly every single morning to some sort of a government office until I found that one person with the appropriate amount of authority to actually sign off on the idea and help us push it forward. The downside of that, however, is that Oscar and I only had four days left in Egypt before we had to fly back and start school. And to be honest, at that point, I had heard the phrase, this will never happen so many times that I wasn't expecting anything anymore. And on that note, I decided to take Oscar on a road trip and head to an oasis in the middle of the desert and hopefully get to do something fun in our last days in Egypt. And on the morning we arrived at the Oasis, after driving through the night, we got a very high profile phone call. That phone call informed Oscar and I that we'd been granted every single legal permission we needed from every single entity involved to make this happen. So we pretty much got the green light to go ahead and climb the pyramid and we were asked to return to Cairo immediately. Media was lining up to cover the event, the date and time was set and we were just ready to go. All right, so this seems to all be going pretty smoothly. Where did things go wrong? One of the high ranking government officials who had rejected our request before telling us that we will never be able to get any sort of permission to climb the pyramid was just so f***ing mad that we were able to pull it off. So on the day of the climb, when Oscar and I arrived at the gates to the pyramid, we were blocked off and we spent hours and hours arguing with the security there, trying to show them that we had every single document necessary. Mohammed Hamoud knows the topic. Go. But still somehow his word was just against ours and we just couldn't pull it off. And that was honestly just like, that's gotta be like the most demoralizing moment of my life. Oscar and I had no other option but to just fly the next morning and head back to Canada. I stayed in touch with the government and I told them about what happened at the gates and they were very apologetic and they promised that I can come back in the summer of 2015 and actually go ahead and climb the pyramid. But a few months before summer, the entire cabinet was replaced and every single minister and government official that I had been working with was just out of office. And even though that was the single most demoralizing experience of my whole entire life, it somehow gave me motivation to just continue pursuing my dreams in the most daring ways possible. Believe it or not, 
this was actually the first story that I've ever shared with Thomas and Matt when we met in the summer of 2015. And within a few days of knowing each other, we had just bonded over the shared desire to live bolder lives, and that marked the start of Yes Theory. I don't know when I'll get to climb the pyramid, but there's just not a single doubt in my head that I'll get to make it happen one day. I went into all of this with the best intentions to promote my country and its people and its history, and I will always stand by that mission no matter what. I've had the chance to do the climb illegally by bribing guards and just doing it sneakily at night, but I would just never go about it in a way that disrespects the value and the history of the pyramids. <sighs> Alright, enough of that. Let's get to the fun part of the video. A few weeks ago, we all went to Egypt. I actually got to give the guys a very unique first experience of the last standing wonder of the ancient world, the Great Pyramids of Giza. Enjoy. I've been to the pyramid countless times, but I've actually never been inside. Bringing you guys in for the first time as I'm experiencing for the first time as well. first time I visited here and I just looked up and I was like I want to be up there one day and I'm still hoping that one day it will. I'm just happy that to be bringing you here today because this is my absolute favorite spot in Egypt as cliche or stereotypical as it, as it may sound. And I've just called my horse guy. He's gonna have 10 horses ready for us. He lives just like basically the fence to his house is just by the pyramid. What you're saying? So it's so funny how you're just hooked up like who has a horse guy? Got a horse guy. I have a horse guy. I'm going to him right now. Got a camel guy. This the Bolak, Bolak. Thomas. Abdullah. Abdullah. <laughs> this is Abdullah. I met him a couple years ago, and he was just like an incredibly kind dude that I met by the pyramids, and he told me he has horses, and ever since I've been riding with him. Every time I come to Egypt, give him a call. He give get me horses out, and we we'll go right at night. So I'm excited to take you guys along. Let's ride some horses. Where do I hold? Right here. Yes. Yeah. 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 Don't move now. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going yet. Yeah. All right. Yalla. Yeah. This is so cool. We're going to be riding horses as we see the pyramid on the side. It's going to be glorious. But we're going through a secret path into the desert, into like the, the desert part around the pyramid because otherwise foreigners wouldn't be allowed in. So this is, he's, he's doing us a favor, yeah. Surreal. <laughs> yes, yes. Seeing the pyramids for the first time in the dark like this. Thomas. 